Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to our very first guitar lesson. Um, this is a lesson for our song Take Me Home. This is the first time I've been doing this. This song is a seven string song originally, but don't worry if you're only playing seven, uh, six string guitars, you can play this song. Um, you just have to stick to the lead guitar parts, which will be on one side of the track. You will be hear that. It will be able to hear that. Um, if you do want to play the rhythm parts, though, um, you can tune down the guitar to drop A, but make sure you get strings that are thick enough to handle that tuning because it's rather uh, it's rather low, and you won't be able to play with your normal gauge strings. It will just flop all the way uh, all around and. Um, it will be very badly intonated. Other than that, you can absolutely play the rhythm parts in a six string, it's not a problem. Um, if you want to play both parts, learn both parts, you obviously need a seven string guitar, otherwise it won't work. What you will be hearing is uh, my guitar, which is an Ibanez seven string, Cyphos, uh, loaded with uh, DiMarzio deactivator pickups, going straight into my Axe FX2. Before we get this lesson going, I will be stop. I will stop talking in a minute. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out this lesson, and thanks to my buddy Thomas Riedeke, who is filming all of this and editing. Um, go check out his Twitch. I will be putting a link in the description. Let's get this shit going. I'm using a clean tone for the intro of the song, which um, is slightly driven. I like to have a bit of uh, overdrive on it. And it also has um, a bit of delay and lots of reverb. And it sounds like this. Basically achieve that with a bit of overdrive, Lots of reverb, lots of delay, just kind of try what works and what doesn't, and you'll get there. The riff is the same exact part in the chorus, it's just slightly more overdrive, a bit more distorted basically, but it's the same exact notes. Here are the notes, here's how you play it. Um, you place your index finger on the 8th fret of the E string, um, your middle finger on the 10th fret of the A string, your pinky on the 12th fret of the D string and then you bar the highest three strings with your index finger. Basically, this is the shape. You will notice it, it will be a quite a bit of a stretch when you first start playing this song, but you will get there. Just make sure your wrist of your left hand is nice and low. Drop your shoulder down just to not cramp up. Be relaxed. You don't need that much pressure to be able to play a chord like this. Just try and pick the notes and if they clearly ring out, that's enough pressure. You don't need any more than that. Here's the sequence for that. You start off with the lowest. That's the first part. After that you place your ring finger on the eleventh fret of the lowest uh, of the E string, you play this again. Then you lift off the both uh, the middle finger and the ring finger. You play this. That's I'm gonna play that again. Then you go over to the 11th fret again of the E string. You leave this finger off though. Keep the ring finger on the 11th of the E. Leave the middle finger off. Did you get that? I'm going to play the intro one more time, slow. And 
and that's the intro lead section. All right, here's the explanation for the rhythm section of, which is basically the intro as well as the chorus. Um, I'm using a rhythm tone which sounds like this. It's a very high gain rhythm sound. I'm using a simulation of a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. I don't know which channel it is. Yeah, it's a simulation of the Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. Heavy sound. We will be using this rhythm tone quite a lot. Let's jump into the lesson portion. It's very simple. You will be following the kick drum of the song pretty much throughout the whole thing. We're playing 16th notes here. So be careful with your right hand. Make sure you're tight and practice this with the metronome. Here's the notes. You start off with a power chord on the third fret of the lowest string, which sounds like this. And you pick 16th notes. It's pretty simple. Just follow the kick drum. Make sure you practice this slowly. Again. That is it. Then the next chord is on the 6th fret. Got that? You move on to the 8th fret. Did you see that? That's... That's basically a... You pick the 10th fret twice and move back down to the 8th fret. Slowly, it sounds like this. Did you get that? I'll play it once more. Slowly. That's the intro riff, as well as the chorus. Practice it with the metronome. It's very important that you stay in time with your drummer. And otherwise, it will just not have the same kind of power and pressure that you want it to have. Be sure to practice with the metronome. All right, first verse, this is what the lead guitar we'll be playing. Um, we're back again with a clean tone we started off with in the intro. Sounds like this. And during the verse there's only three chords really but you're arpeggiating them. To arpeggiate means you are fretting a chord but you play the notes individually and you have them ring out together. It's not an arpeggio, uh, not an arpeggio but you arpeggiate the notes. And the first chord is a C minor add 9, which is uh, 10, like from starting from the 6th string, 8th fret, 8, 10, 12, 8, 8, 8. And basically, what you do is you create, you're trying to create an atmosphere in this section of the song. So just pick a couple of notes. The drums and the bass will fill out the rest, as well as the vocals, obviously. Then you move on to a, a G sharp major, which is on the fourth fret. Just I hope you learned your bar chords, which is basically just a normal bar chord like this, which is four, six, six, and five. And then you move up another two frets, uh, which gives you A sharp major add 9, I guess. Um, and that is probably the worst chord you will encounter in your entire guitar playing career. It's basically 6, 8, 10, 7, 6, 6. I'll repeat that. 6, 8, 10. Make sure you fret this note. The, I'll, give it, I'll give you the fretting fingers again. 6 with your index, 
10 with your ring finger. Uh, no, bullshit, sorry. Si 6 with your index. 8 with your uh, ring. 10 with your pinky. And 7 with your middle finger. And you bar these highest two strings with your index finger, which gives you this. Sounds pretty, plays horribly, but you pick those notes as well. Make sure the transition between the second and the third chord is smooth. And again, keep your wrist low, keep your shoulder as low as you can, just to not cramp up. You don't want to use any more pressure than is necessary. So, in the first section, in the first half of this verse, just pick a couple of notes, and in the second half, start building up. You want to build up towards the pre-chorus, which is heavy. So, here's how I would play it. And then you start adding some notes. Keep the same chords, keep the same fretting hands, just add some more notes. build it up. That's verse 1 for you. Alright, Thomas just made me laugh, this is why I'm smiling. Verse 1. Um, for the second guitar, this just comes in during the second half of the first verse. It's just for ambience. Um, this is actually something our producer, Johnny, came up with in the studio, he was like, yeah, we need to embellish that a bit. And he came up with this part, it sounds like this. Um, it's also a clean tone, by the way, the same clean tone. Um, you put your index finger on the ninth fret of the B string, um, your pinky on the 12th fret of the G string, I said G string, and your middle finger on the 10th fret of the 12th string and it gives you this a bit ugly sounding chord it's very dissonant but it fits well over all of the three chords and what you're doing is just pick these notes individually again we're arpeggiating them sounds like this it's very simple you just go down 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 sorry, I, I, pick the, I pick it a bit differently. I pick it, I just noticed that, I'm sorry. Um, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. It's very simple, but adds a lot of depth to that section, I find. Thank you, Johnny, for that section. And we're on to the next riff. Um, we're already onto the pre-chorus section, and I'm going to be using another high gain sound. Back to that one. Back to that one. Um, and here's how you play that riff: you put your finger, your index finger, on the eighth fret of the sixth string. This is the lead section, by the way. Um, sounds like this. What that was is 8 and 11, 10, 11, 10 on the A string. Did you get that? I'll play it slowly again. Make sure you are playing these notes individually. You don't want them ringing out together like this. This is wrong. Sounds good, but not for this song. This is how you play it. Obviously play that twice and then comes the first tail which is this. It's all in C minor so keep that in mind. You're in C minor which sounds like... You're just descending. 
on the record there's a harmony to that which is if you play that together it gives you a nice harmony sound um, we, we have that on the record we don't play it live it's not that necessary but it's, it's ear candy for the record basically here's that section again play it again slow oh shit sorry then you repeat that and again you're descending in C minor which is basically giving you 11, 10, 8 on the A string 11, 10, 8 on the E string and then down to 6 on the E string and then here comes a bit of a tricky part fret the, no, fret the 6th string with your middle finger and you're going to be skipping the A string place your ring finger on the 6th string sorry, 6th fret of the D string which gives you a G sharp um, and then you play this pattern oh sorry, your index finger is on the 5th fret behind it so that's what you're playing and again be careful that you're not having all the notes ringing out together sounds like this you're pulling off oh sorry and for the ending of the pre-chorus riff this is what you're playing you can use these two fingers alone which is basically a 6-5 on the D string, move down to the A string on the 6th fret this is a pull off and the hammer on afterwards and then you play this that's the whole riff, I'm going to be playing the whole section again slowly and that's the whole pre-chorus section lead guitar Alright, here's the verse section of the pre-chorus. Um, you're not doing much with the left hand on this, in this section, so focus on the right hand. I had to change my picking technique, um, period, um, because in the studio I had a lot of trouble getting the picking tight, so I changed my guitar technique. I used to pick with my fingers basically like this. Like uh, if you focus on my right hand with these fingers, I used to keep my hand open, which isn't bad, but I got a lot tighter when I started pulling my hand, uh, my fingers in. So if you're, I'm not telling you how to play, but if you're having trouble with this kind of playing, maybe try this. Anyway, here's the notes. Um, you're on the third fret of uh, the 7th string which is uh, C and you're playing this syncopated pattern you're following the drums which is this that's the first half what you're playing is uh, the third fret first the lowest string then you're playing this you're skipping the string you're going three on the lowest string you're skipping a string you're jumping to the fifth string on the fifth fret got that? it's 
It's pretty easy, but just be careful that you're not playing. You want it. You want it to be sharp and tight. That's how you play it. And then here, the tail comes in. You're just playing a full, uh, you're just picking 16 throats straight through. And then here, you shift everything down two frets, play the exact same pattern. And here's where you stop. After you've played that last note, you go back into the chorus. I'm going to be playing this section uh, again, slower, the whole section altogether. Sounds like this. Let's do one more time, slow. There you go, and that's the pre-chorus section. All right, we're on to verse two. Both guitars are doing the same thing. Um, using the high gain setting again, the Mesa Boogie simulation, uh, make sure you are down picking all of the notes and don't strum it, uh, just to give it more of a bite, more aggression, and more clarity in the end. Uh, what you're going to do is play bar chords. The whole second verse is just bar chords, the melody is going to be played by the piano. And here's the chords. The first chord is on the 8th fret, just a C minor. which is you bar the whole 8th fret with your index finger uh, you play 10 on the A string and 10 on the D string gives you this sound and then all 8th notes just ta -ta 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 -ta, just down pick it and then you play a C minor 6, which is basically the only thing that changes. You flip around these two, make sure you get, uh, make sure you, you practice that transition smoothly. Um, you had your ring and your pinky on 10 and 10. Now you're placing your ring finger on the 10th fret of the 4th string and your pinky moves up. A string, basically, no, down a string to the fifth string, eleventh uh, fret, and it gives you this sound. So basically, this is the first half. And then you move down to A sharp major, uh, which is. Six eight eight five six six. Again, down pick everything. I repeat, six eight eight five six six. It's not a telephone number. And then you move down to G sharp major. Just shift the whole bar chord down two frets. Same exact pattern. And then you move back up. Here's the first half of the second verse. And that's the first half. The second half is pretty much the same thing, but when you when you arrive at the fourth fret at the G sharp, that's what happens. You play a G major chord. And it's just that one stab, the piano fills out the rest of the bar. 
That's the whole second verse. We've arrived at the bridge section of Take Me Home. I'm going to be starting this off by saying that we have a new tone, uh, which is a lead tone. It's a bit... Uh, it's not the kind of lead tone you would use in a solo. Um, this is a very atmospheric lead tone with, uh, with a lot of reverb, lots of delay, and it sounds like this. And I'm using the bridge... Uh, sorry, the neck pickup on my guitar. Um, it sounds a lot smoother, a lot rounder and warmer and you don't want to have too much attack on this section. So here's how the part is played. Um, place your index finger on the 13th fret of the B string, um, your pinky finger on the 16th fret of the E string and your ring finger on the 15th fret of the E string. You should have this kind of shape. What you're playing is the same pattern that you're playing in the pre-chorus with the lead guitar, it's this. That is it. It's pretty easy. It's very simple. What you're doing with the root note here, this is the C root note. The rhythm guitar is playing a C power chord. So what you're doing is, you're following the rhythm guitar with the root note of the lead guitar. We do this a lot. It's just something to glue the whole guitar sections together. What you're doing, the rhythm guitar will be shifting down to a G sharp. So what you're doing is, you shift down the root note to a G sharp as well, which is the 13th fret of the G string but you keep the high notes the same so you're string skipping here be careful that you're not picking the B string mute it if you can I'm muting it with my, with the flesh fleshy part of my uh, ring finger, uh, sorry index finger so you're getting this kind of sound it's very muted so just be careful to not pick it at all but if you do pick it not much will come out and here's that part Let's play those two parts together. And after that, you switch down to uh, B flat which is uh, the 11th fret of the B string you place your pinky on the 15th fret of the E string and your ring finger, sorry, your middle finger on the 13th fret of the E string which gives you this pattern and that's the whole section okay, I'm going to be playing it one more time slow sounds like this That's the whole bridge section lead guitar. We're on to the bridge section of, uh, of Take Me Home. This is the rhythm guitar part. I'm using the clean tone again, which is slightly overdriven. Um, and we're just playing power chords. It's very simple. Just follow the kick drum pattern or just play eight notes. It doesn't really matter. You're just creating atmosphere here. Life, I don't even play the part, I'm just trying to get the people to clap along. So, here's a section. It uh, starts with a power chord um, on the 8th fret of the E string, which is this. You play this. Just play 8th notes and focus on the kick drum. Just. Uh, like the kick drum is playing uh, triplets there, quarter note triplets, half note triplets actually. 
So you're playing, you're playing this. Did you hear that? Let me do that again. Like that. And the, the next power chord is a, uh, you just move up your pinky to the 11th fret, but keep the index finger on the 8th fret, it sounds like this. Then you move down to G sharp, power chord on the 4th fret. Then you move up to... A sharp. If you haven't already noticed, we've been using this same chord progression throughout the whole song. So, here's it again. And then you switch to a high gain sound, which is this, and you palm mute, you play the exact same chords, but you palm mute them. Notice what I did there on the A sharp, I'm opening up my right hand, so you're going Just slightly play it lighter and lighter and lighter until it's fully open. And that's the whole bridge section for the rhythm guitar of Take Me Home. Uh, we're at the breakdown section of the song and I'm using a lead tone which has uh, a lot of gain and reverb and delay. I think it's a little bit of uh, chorus, not too much. It sounds like this. The delay is obviously synced up to the tempo of the song, which is 145 BPM. Um, I'm using the bridge pickup again, and it's the same pattern as it was in the bridge section with the build up but you shift it down one octave so you're going to the 10th fret of the D string and you're putting your fingers accordingly now what you're doing is picking straight 16th notes it's like this this is going to be the trickiest section of the whole song this is going to be it was for me at least fucking nightmare to record so be careful with this start off slow with the metronome maybe at something like 90 BPM just work your way up because you have to be clean with this section so be careful with that that's the whole part uh, that's the first part and then you move down your index finger to the 11th fret of the A string and you're keeping the high notes the same so you're palm muting that as well make sure you pick it cleanly and hard and then you move down to the 8th fret of uh, the D string and 12, 12 on the G string, 10 on the G string. And that, uh, that thing just repeats throughout the breakdown. And that's the whole thing. There's a harmony to that on the record, which is the third up. Basically, when this is playing, the other guitar, the harmony part is playing also straight thick 16th notes just like that and there's a harmony to that as well uh, to the other sections which is 
which is uh, the 15th fret of the A string. And then the final portion of the harmony section is uh, 12, 15, 13 on the uh, 12 on the D string, 15 and 13 on the G string. Life, nobody plays that section. We have a harmonizer to take care of that on the X effects. And let me just engage that for you so you can hear how that sounds. So when I'm playing the lower section of the lead, you, what you just heard was without the harmonizer. With the harmonizer, it sounds like this. You get the idea. It's just ear candy, another thing you do on the record. Actually, on the record, we kept the whole octave up thing and just picked it like this. Shit, sorry, again, without the effects. Just kept that as well. This is just something to keep on records, just keep that in mind when you're writing your own music, how can you spice up the whole thing? This is one of the ways, just add harmonies, add something for the ear to differentiate and give it more depth. And that's the lead section for the whole breakdown. All right, we're at the rhythm guitar uh, for the breakdown section. It's very simple, it's just a syncopated pattern that sounds like this. You start off on the seventh, sorry, seventh string, yeah, third fret, and it sounds like this. That's the whole riff. Here are the notes. You're playing a pattern of five, then a pattern of three. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, then one, two, three. And then comes something like a galloping picking. Just think of Maiden, Iron Maiden. Sounds like that. Just make sure you're picking accurately with the kick drum. You want to be tight with the kick drum to just give it a lot of power. And then you move down from the third fret to the first fret. Move up to the sixth fret. Move down to the fifth fret. Repeat. Yeah, well, that's the whole song. All right, since this is a lesson aimed at beginners or somewhere around beginners, I'd like to give you some tips and tricks I've learned over the time I've been playing. First of all, when you're playing your high gain sound, keep the gain down. It's something I had to learn. I'm still adjusting to it. But when you're playing... Um, heavy rhythm stuff. I'm not using too much gain. It's all in the picking. I had to learn that in the studio. Our producer kicked my ass with that. So basically just try to keep the gain down as much as you can because that way you have more dynamic control over what you're doing. You can go or it's the same exact tone. It's all on the hands. So keep the gain down if you can. Tip number two overdrive man so a lot of guys when they're using a high gain amp they use a overdrive pedal in front of the amp to boost the attack into the preamp section what that means is basically what you're doing is tightening up the sound making your signal louder and hitting the preamp section harder also you're taking out a bit of the low end of the guitar so you're making everything sound tighter. What that does is you're fitting into the mix a bit better, you're tightening up the whole guitar sound, and you're taking away, like basically you're taking away the low end that your bass guitarist is going to be taking up. 
So keep that in mind. Use an overdrive pedal in front of your high gain amp, whatever it may be. Just try it out. Maybe you like it, maybe you won't. If you do, it will help you in the mix. Tip number three. Write a lot of songs. If you're starting out with a band and you haven't written a lot of songs and you think your songs suck, man, you should hear our first couple of songs. They suck so bad. And it's normal. You should suck at first. If you don't suck at first, maybe you're a genius. I don't know. Either way, don't let that discourage you. Just keep going. Writing songs is something that you have to learn as well. You get better at it the more you do it. So basically, just keep doing it. Keep churning out songs. Keep writing different parts. Keep listening to other music as well. It just makes for a better result. You have to practice that as well. Just as much as you practice your guitar or your instrument, whatever it may be, writing songs is something you have to practice as well. So do that. Keep going at it. Don't you dare think that Metallica wrote Master of Puppets on the first try. Tip number four. Learn the basics of other instruments, dude. Playing in a band is about communication. So if you're trying to play in a band and you don't know what your, drumming is, uh, what your drummer is doing, or if you're the drummer you don't have any sort of idea what the gu guitarist does, learn the basics. It's not that hard. Just ask your band member. Your fellow band member will be happy to explain to you what a snare is, what a kick drum does, and what the ride is for. It's important to know. You want to be able to tell your drummer, maybe try this or that, or when you're a drummer, you want to be able to tell your bassist, maybe try this or that idea. It's very important. Everyone in Atropas knows the basics of other instruments, and it's important that you do too. It's not that hard. It takes about 30 minutes to learn, and you will be happy about the communication in your band. Tip number five. Record yourself. If you want to make a lot of progress fast, or faster at least, be your own critic. Record yourself with whatever you got. If, if it's your cell phone, uh, your tape recorder, whatever you got. Maybe you, got even, maybe you even got Cubase. Record yourself and listen back. And be critical with yourself. Don't be shy about mistakes. We all, do, we all have mistakes. I mean, you saw me in this lesson make tons of them. And it's normal. We're human. But if you do, just be sure you notice them. It's important that you hear yourself making those mistakes. Otherwise, you won't be making any progress at all. That is, if you want to get better at your instrument, of course. If you do, that's one way to go at it. Take a metronome, record yourself while you're playing over the metronome, and just keep track of where you made the mistakes, focus on those mistakes, and get better at them. We're at the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for listening. Um, thank you so much for taking, out, uh, for taking the time to check out my band. If this is the first time you hear from us, thank you very much for sticking around. Um, we have a couple of more songs that we put out. They're on our new album called Episodes of Solitude. If you haven't already, check it out. If you already checked it out, thank you so much for picking it up. Um, if you would like to see more lessons like these, just comment below, leave your comment, or just text us, message us, whatever you want. Um, and again, thanks to Tom for filming this whole thing and keeping up with my mistakes and retaking everything. Um, be sure to check out his channel. Like I said, I will be leaving a link in the description down below. I'll see you soon. Check us out on the road. We'll see ya. Bye.